What do you think are the things that are going to remain most vivid in your memory from this World Series? I think one thing is that Washington becomes a crown jewel baseball city. You know, for a city that didn't have baseball for 33 years, those of us who live there knew it was potentially a great baseball town. It just took a long time. I think it could be that 21-year-old Juan Soto, this was his national coming out party. It could be that Steven Strasburg began to flesh out his Hall of Fame resume. Or maybe just something as simple as Anthony Rendon is one of the five best players in the game, and we, and we now on a national stage see Jesse, this team started the season 19 and 31. People all over baseball, all over the community of the sport were saying Dave Martinez isn't the guy. The front office said, no, he is. And then we saw this remarkable run, not only in the regular season, but then winning five elimination games, something only a few teams have ever done in the annals of baseball. How did Dave Martinez finally mold this team into the champion we now know. Yeah, you, you mentioned that that 19 and 31 start and on May 23rd, I mean, there was there weren't many people who were not calling for Dave Martinez's head as the manager, but he kept them together. And I, I think a lot of the guys give credit to the fact that he he stayed the same. He didn't change at all. You know, despite that rough start, he he kind of he stayed steady and and he kept this uh, mentality that sounds cliche, but he just kept saying we're going to go one and zero tomorrow and. Once you stacked enough one and O's on top of each other, you get into the playoffs, and then you start winning these el elimination games. And e even crazier than those elimination games, they trailed in every single one. They never were in command early on, but they came back in all five. So, I mean, this team certainly had something going, and I think a lot of the credit does go to Dave Martinez, who, like you, like, like you mentioned, was, was essentially fired by everyone, but the, the Nationals right. ke kept trusting him. Richard, you know the baseball culture in D.C. You know how big a moment this is. I mean, you weren't there in 1924 when... Fred Lindstrom couldn't feel that ball because of the pebble, and you know they beat the Giants, but it's but pretty close, right? So, so how does this make Washington, as you said, uh, not only the national capital but the baseball capital now of the country? Yeah, because if you saw the games on TV at Nationals Park, or you were at the games and seeing the, the baby shark thing, all those people, 45,000 people doing that baby shark dance. That's how, you, that's how you get a fan base engaged with your team. They have been a really good team since opening day 2012. I think won the second most games in baseball, but they hadn't had success in October. And not only that, it's an appealing team. Juan Soto's an amazingly entertaining guy. You have Max Scherzer, maybe one of the great competitors in the game. And I just think people, it becomes something that you want to be part of you want to get your kid a shirt you want to be at the ballpark this is the final brick in the wall for a franchise that's been awfully well run for a long time jesse earlier today i had a chance to speak with your colleague richard's former colleague at the post thomas boswell the legendary baseball writer about the meaning of this and we talked a little bit about one of the big elements of this story the nationals doing this in 2019 the year uh, the first year after bryce harper decamps from philadelphia here's what tom boswell had to say about that you can have a team with good chemistry with Bryce, but I do not think that you can probably have a team with this fabulous team chemistry with Bryce because he really is a, uh, a brand, you know, a self-branding guy. Jesse, I, I, you know, I, I don't expect you to either say yay or nay on what Tom Boswell said, but it is not a unique perspective. I, I should say that, you know, we've seen things like this before the year after Alex Rodriguez left Seattle that team won 116 regular season games the most ever although they would fall to the Yankees in the ALCS how did the absence of Harper have an impact on this team yeah I think if you ask you know those within the Nationals and those within that clubhouse they probably would give more credit to the additions they made rather than the subtractions in this case Bryce but I do think there was you know, an overwhelming sentiment that, that everyone was pretty equal on this team. There wasn't a star sucking up the spotlight. There wasn't anyone's free agency hanging over the season. There wasn't, you know, one guy that, that everyone had to cater to. And Bryce, whether, whether he tried to be that or not, he was that star. He always was. He came up as the number one pick. He came up as one of the, the most heralded prospects in baseball history. So when you have that guy, I mean, you, you just you kind of take on that role whether it's something that you, you're willing to or not. And I think for this team to sort of get in this in the situation where all 25 guys are on an even playing field, I mean, they talk a lot about how jokes fly to everyone. Max Scherzer gets the same amount of jokes that, you know, the prospect who just came up from the minors does. And maybe that wasn't always the case with, with Bryce Harper. So I think there are some elements that maybe it just created an equilibrium that allowed this team to have chemistry that, you know, really was a part of their backbone. Richard, um, you know, last night we saw A.J. Hinch 
take out Zach Greinke. His pitch count was very low. We know how it turned out. Uh, we know how we can look at it with hindsight in the moment. What did you think of the call? In the moment, I thought he had the game right where he wanted it. It was Zach Greinke going a third time through the lineup. He'd given up a home run. He walked a guy. And what he had right there was Will Harris ready to go. That is has the guy who has been his most reliable reliever. I mean, this he was going to get he was going to get him out of that inning, and then they were going to turn it over to the late inning guys. And if you go back and look at the pitch, you know, uh, it's a results oriented business. I do understand that. Will Harris made a really good pitch to Howie Kendrick. Hats off to Howie Kendrick for taking a ball on the low and low and away and clanking it off the foul pole. That was a credit to Howie Kendrick for a special World Series moment. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.